Good afternoon. Uh, one of the uh, tactics used to attack the uh, King James Bible and uh, the, uh, the its defenders is the uh, uh, view that the, uh, there are those who say the King James Bible changes the Greek and Hebrew. Now, of course, what they mean by that, what they're trying to insinuate, is that uh, when we say it changes the Greek and Hebrew, we're saying it changes the original. No one has the original. What we're saying is it changes the Greek and Hebrew texts, and uh, it is uh, basically uh, its own text because it takes from every text and corrects the Greek and Hebrew and gets the correct reading. Now, uh, uh, Eric Harvind did a uh, interview with James White, and uh, this was a uh, uh, Bible protector had this on his uh, uh, his uh, website on his video uh, on his video channel and I'm just gonna uh, re uh, uh, play back something that Eric Hobbin said and uh, show how, how cleverly these guys uh, try to, to uh, try to put the question out try to lay the question out in order to make insinuations and to uh, uh, distort what our position is Let me, I'm play this here antagonistic against the idea of the King Bible, Bible being perfect to talk about the King James Bible. Why, of, of all the people he could go to, does he go to the one that is most strongly going to be saying things um, which are pointing out criticisms or negativity against the King James Bible, which is what James White does. His book is full of pointing out so-called inconsistencies or errors or problems or whatever he likes to call them in the King James Bible. So he's not going to say nice things about it as such. I mean, he'll say, oh, yes, if you like the... Poetic language. Use the King James Bible if you, you know, if you're a, a person who thinks that the Texas Receptus is uh, is is uh, correct. James White sort of sneers a little bit at those kind of people, but he can engage with them and sort of blow those ideas out of the water because they're very easy to defeat from James White's position. He thinks his um, way is is better than theirs. Um, but the problem is, and we'll see, is that. And what they're addressing here isn't the normal King James Bible only person who thinks the King James Bible is perfect. They're actually going to be talking about people who say that the King James Bible is made by inspiration from 1604 to 1611. Let's uh, come in and listen to a little bit of this as we do this review on this debate that Eric Hovind had with James White in Florida. My King James Bible, that's still what I use today. However, I've noticed that there are some people that would say that the that God has re-inspired and you, the King James and that the King James was actually re-inspired. And they would go so far as to say you should use the King James to correct a Greek or a Hebrew. Now notice what he says, a Greek and Hebrew, a Greek and Hebrew what? Uh, so he, he, he leaves that hanging. This is how these guys talk. Uh, the fact is no major King James Bible defender ever says the King James Bible translators uh, were inspired like the uh, uh, those who uh, received the revelation. That's where these guys get mixed up. They try to they try to insinuate uh, that uh, uh, or confuse the idea that uh, inspiration is the same as revelation. There was one revelation, but uh, when a translation is done correctly, God uh, gives that in, in, gives that scripture gives it by inspiration. Uh, inspiration is life. It's life in the book. The word of God is quick and powerful. So when you have a correct translation. Uh, it is uh, inspired. God has breathed life into it. That's what we mean by many uh, inspirations. But there's one, only one revelation that was given to the, uh, the with the originals. But the issue of the text, you see, the, the, the Greek and Hebrew, he just leaves it hanging. Uh, the, uh, the King James Bible corrects every Greek and Hebrew text. Uh, there was no perfect Greek and Hebrew text. And therefore, the King James Bible corrects it. And uh, Fuller... And uh, I'm using Edward uh, F. Hills writes here, hence the King James Version ought to, ought to be regarded not merely as a translation of the Texas Receptus, but also an independent variety of the Texas Receptus. And that's exactly it. It is, a, uh, it is its own received text, and it corrects all the other Texas Receptus additions. Uh, and therefore, it's not pure Erasmus, it's not pure Stephanus, it's not pure Beza. It, they took they took uh, the best from each text and corrected the and corrected the uh, text. They get a perfect 
Tectus Receptus uh, edition in English. And uh, that's what these guys want to uh, uh, reject. Uh, so the fact is, is that the, uh, the King James Bible is a perfect received text that corrects all Hebrew uh, and Greek texts. And therefore, we have a perfect received text in English. And uh, that's what we have today in the King James Bible. So when these guys jump up and down and, says, and say that uh, people are saying that the King James Bible corrects the Hebrew and Greek, they never tell you what the Hebrew and Greek is. They tell you they just leave that hanging. When it corrects the Hebrew and Greek, it corrects, it cor they, the King James Bible corrects Hebrew and Greek texts and any manuscripts uh, that, uh, that uh, support those texts. And uh, the, uh, the final perfect reading is in the King James Bible. They took, so they took their readings from every available source, and they didn't lean on one particular source. They, they took them from every, and they say that in their, uh, in their, in their notes and in their uh, prefaces, that uh, they uh, took uh, their readings from every source. The Holy Spirit guided them in their selection, and uh, they came up with a perfect English received text. So yes, the English received text corrects every Greek and Hebrew text. Amen. Thank you.